Hey folks, this is Stretch from the 72nd Fighter Wing here to talk to you about the new TFR and FLIR features in Falcon BMS 4.33. So in order for this to work, you have to be flying an aircraft that has a lantern pod and both chin pods on the left and right chin hard points. Uh, that's necessary in order to get TFR and FLIR support. The only aircraft I've found that this works in so far is the Block 42. All the others will typically load the sniper pod or just one of the lantern pods. All right, so we definitely got some terrain out there. We're low. It's nighttime. Uh, let's get the lantern pod up and running first. So what we want to do is we want to go to the FLIR page. Um, and you see here that the FLIR is operating in standby mode. We can put it into operational mode. And now we have forward-looking infrared on the MFD. We can see what's out in front of us. We got some terrain. That's wonderful. Okay. So, uh, but more interesting than having the FLIR on the MFD is having it on the HUD. So let's roll the brightness wheel up on the HUD. Whoops. And boom. Now we can see what's in front of us on the HUD. That's pretty awesome, huh? Um... In this mode, uh, you may notice, uh, if, especially if we turn on the night vision goggles, that um, the FLIR image is ever so slightly offset from the actual image out the cockpit. To fix this, we want to boresight the FLIR. So what we do is we press the boresight button, and then we use the throttle cursor to move the FLIR image around until it lines up with the view outside. You want to use distant mountain peaks for this. will be the easiest thing. So right about there is perfect. When we're done, we hit boresight again. And now we can turn off the night vision goggles and we know we have an accurate view of what's outside. So um, the FLIR also supports look into turn. If we have more than a five degree bank and we hold down DMS up, you can see that the FLIR slews slightly to show us what's in front of us in the turn. That way we can kind of clear the uh, view ahead of the turn as we make the turn. The FLIR also supports snap look, which you can use to look in any direction. Simply hold down DMS up and then move the cursor in any direction, like so, and you can kind of snap look in that direction. This gives you a good idea of what's around you. All right, that's about it for FLIR. Let's cover the TFR next. So the TFR is a terrain following radar. Um, again, you need to have um, the lantern pods, both chin pods, available for TFR to work. As you can see right now, it's in standby mode. Um, if we put it into norm mode, um, it starts scanning for terrain. Let's go a bit lower so we can actually get into some of this terrain. So the TFR is designed to operate between 300 and 600 knots, and that's so that it has enough authority to uh, pitch the aircraft up and down to maintain terrain clearance. So try not to use it below 300 knots or above 600 knots. So you can see here we've got an E-squared display of the terrain ahead of us, kind of moving from right to left. This is the terrain ahead of us. This horizontal line here through the MFD, that's our... Um, that's our selected clearance plane. Uh, we can move that up or down depending on how close we want to fly to terrain uh, using the right OSB buttons. Uh, in norm mode, but without TFR autopilot engaged, it provides terrain guidance. So you see this box here in the HUD. As long as we keep the FPM in that box, we'll maintain our desired terrain clearance. Uh, you can see that's happening now. Um, if we actually want the autopilot to maintain terrain clearance for us, we can simply hit the um, ADV mode button here, active, the box changes to a line, and now the autopilot is flying the plane for us. And all we have to do is manage the throttle to make sure we stay in our speed range. This is a pretty hard ride, as you can tell. We're kind of bucking Bronco here, so you can change it to a soft or a smooth ride, depending on um, the, uh, sort of the quality you want. Um, there's two other modes that you should care about, along with the standby and off modes, and that's LPI, that stands for low probability of intercept, and the LPI mode uh, is used if you don't want to pop up on other people's RWRs. And lastly, the weather mode is used to reject false radar returns caused by weather. You should have that on if you're doing terrain following in fog or um, in rain. Though personally, doing terrain following in fog would scare the shit out of me, and I'd probably need new underwear. Um, the, uh, lowest, uh, the lowest clearance level here is called VLC. That's 100 feet, um, and it's very low clearance. Um, now, uh, assuming that you have the manual TF fly-up switch enabled, which we'll do that right now, that means, let's enable it. 
that means that you get fly up protection. So what that means is we can turn off the uh, terrain following autopilot and go back to the uh, TS standby mode, but we'll still get fly up protection. So that means if we point at this mountain here and we continue to fly towards this mountain, eventually the jet will automatically fly us up away from terrain. So let's just wait for that to happen. And there we go. The fly up mode's active. Um, if for whatever reason your fly up mode uh, it interrupts a, for instance, air to ground attack, you can simply press the paddle switch and that will cancel the fly up. Uh, this is also good. Occasionally fly up can get stuck. You'll notice that the uh, jet will do a fly up and um, it'll get stuck in that position. It won't return control to you. So just hit the autopilot paddle switch, the disconnect switch, and you should get back control of the jet. Um, the other thing you might have noticed is that um, when we're in norm, uh, when the uh, TFR is in norm, with or without the autopilot engaged, uh, you do get terrain advisory. So you might have seen the terrain left, terrain right, and that'll help you uh, maintain clearance from terrain, especially in night flying situations like these where you might have less peripheral view. Uh, one last important note is that both the TFR and the FLIR take a little time to warm up. So especially if you have a night mission, uh, and maybe you'll be using the FLIR right after takeoff. It takes 8 to 15 minutes to warm up. So definitely power up your FLIR as soon as your jet powers up because you want to use that time um, on the ground while you're ramping to get the FLIR powered up and ready to go. Um, that's about it for the TFR and the FLIR in Falcon BMS 4.33. Happy flying, guys. This is Stretch signing off.